Well, hello friends, Sniz here, and today we are back again on the Iron Reboot, the progression account, whatever you want to call it. Quick note before I get into it, again, there is a document in the description if you need more information on what is covered in the video or past videos, I recommend highly that you check there, as I tend to gloss over things in actual videos. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. So, uh... Not really mentioned, but kind of already known by most players. There is a skill called Maple Warrior, uh, Empress's Blessing, or... Uh, yeah, I think it's a variant of Maple Warrior. Basically how it works is it's a level 30 skill for all classes that at max gives you 15% of your assigned AP back to you. So it's, a, it's basically a damage buff. You can only have one version of Maple Warrior active at a time, so don't worry about it. But for Cygnus Knights specifically, and since I'm a Thunderbreaker, I'm a Cygnus Knight, you have to go through a small quest line to unlock it. So in the background, it's I'm just completing it. It's very simple, very, yeah, very, very quick. Uh, you go to Cygnus, she awakens, then you meet her at Six Path Crossway in the Reef Station. And then you go back to a reeve, I think, through the cutscene. There's a cutscene somewhere. And you um and then you finish the quest there, but then Shinsu contacts you, I believe. And then you talk to Shinsu and she grants you a blessing. And that is basically your access to the Empress's blessing. While I'm here, and before we get into the next uh segment that is going to be taking up the rest of the video, I want to mention mastery books. Since I am playing a Cygnus Knight, I failed to mention them, but uh, depending on the class you're playing, as long as it's on a Cygnus Knight, you may be paying for it. As in, your skills will only go up to level 10 and they'll cap. If you hover over them, and you you might have already, you might have maxed out all your uh, skills and then realized you still have extra, uh, that's because some of your skills are not uh, mastered are not mastered enough to go to the higher level. So, with that said, you can buy mastery books from a NPC called Iliad. He exists in the town of Leafry and probably elsewhere, but he sells master book, uh, mastery books 20 and 30. Some skills go up to 30, some skills go up to 20, but are locked at 10 initially. If they go up to 30, you need to buy both a 20 and 30 book. You can also get mastery books from events, quest lines, all sorts of things, but if you're low on cash, uh, I would recommend checking out events as they might be a huge benefit to you. I think that about covers mastery books as they're not there's not much to them in reality. They just unlock the next 10 levels of the skill that you are trying to upgrade. And within the skill window, if you hover over the skill while it is maxed, it will tell you if it can be upgraded further and if it requires a mastery book. So don't overbuy them as they tend to be untradeable, but there are instances where they are tradable. Just be careful. Don't waste your money. Alright, I'll see you in the next clip. Oh boy, this is going to be a long one. So, I mentioned in the last video that when you hit 140 and that we would be hitting 140 in this episode, you have just broken a major milestone. At 140, you have fully maxed all of your fourth job skills, excluding hyper skills. Actually, hyper skills get unlocked, and hyper stat gets unlocked at 140. We will get into that, but for the majority of this video, we're talking about potentials. You are starting to hit end gear game, as in you are able to get a set that's going to last you a decent amount of time before you move on to next sets. And depending on your playstyle and if you accept carries and all that, you may be further or further ahead or about at my pace since I'm soloing everything. I would recommend that you pick up a set of Pencilier or with the Utgard weapon for the six set effect. You will be very quickly replacing everything, but it is it grants a very significant damage boost from the set effect while it lasts. There are multiple reasons to break the set effect, as it's much more much much more inferior to other sets that are cl closer to end game. Uh, you'll see them in the future, and probably not on, on me specifically for quite some time. So as mentioned before. The, so the, for that segment, 
the first thing you want to note is at 140 you have finished all your skills as in they are maxed out for fourth job the second thing you want to know is that you have now unlocked and gained access to the pencilier set and there's a set for each class branch so pirates bowmen thieves mages and warriors there's a set for each of them individually and then there's a weapon that goes along with the class you're playing With that said, I will get into the majority of this video for the, you know, it's kind of scary to explain as there's a lot, but we'll get into that next. I'll see you then. Okay, while we're back in town, I made a quick stop at a merchant and sold stuff. You may have noticed along your travels, and I have failed to mention it because it's not necessarily important to you until like level 100 where you get your first best in slot well not best in slot where you get your first emblem that you're going to be using for quite some time i did not mention potentials or how they work or much about them until we were going to get to 140 as this is where i tend to use a lot more uh, money identifying them and we're getting closer and closer to obtaining gear that we will find use in cubing and getting potentials on Good potentials that is so in your inventory while you've been traveling you've probably noticed some items have a red maybe even a purple and sometimes yellow outline around them i believe red just means that they're unidentified purple means it's of uh, so items come that drop naturally tend to come with a can come with potential and the Tier of potential is random. Most commonly, if it dro even drops with potential, you're going to find that it's of rare quality, which is the lowest tier. If you're lucky, which is, it's more uncommon than lucky, you'll find epic gear, which is, yeah, it, it is lucky. And then if you're really lucky, you might have picked up a unique piece of gear, which is the third highest tier, and epic being the second, uh, fourth, a third, and then unique being the second highest, my bad. Either way, potential adds two to three lines when identified with the magnifying glass within your inventory window of various stat bonuses or health bonuses, various bonuses in general. The lower the tier, the more likely you're going to get shit lines or low values on the lines. The higher tier you are, the the higher the rates are going to the higher the lines are going to be in a f in power. But that doesn't necessarily erase shit lines, as you'll will learn later on. The gist of potentialing of potential systems is they're very strong since they can give percent of your stat, and stat is equals more damage. Certain items can get percent attack, which equals more damage. Certain items can get percent IED, which equals more damage against bosses, not necessarily mobs, because mobs have such low defense already. And then you can also get boss damage on those said items, and you can get you can get decent skills, decent versions of other classes skills. You can get critical damage only on gloves though. You can get health, MP, yeah. Besides just main stats, you can get flat bonuses or percent bonuses. There is a lot you can get with the potential system. The importance of it is that it adds up very, very quickly. So, with that said, it is in your best interest to at least identify these items, not necessarily spend money on potentials, potentialing them further or cubing them. Cubing is a way to re-roll your potential. It's completely random and you have a chance to tier up if you're not at legendary quite yet, which is the highest tier. Uh, you can use either red or black cubes, which in Reboot are purchased for 12 and 22 mil each, respectively. Reds being 12 and blacks being 22. I believe that's correct. I hope that's correct. Either way, you can purchase them in one in singular amounts or groups of six. Uh, the groups of six stack while the singular ones do not. So if you're going for a huge session of cubing, uh, buying the packs of six will help save trips to said uh, cash shop. When cubing, uh, it's, it's luck. 
I cannot recommend red or blacks. Per personally, I prefer blacks because I found that I tear up faster and more often with them. But some people are diehard reds. I do agree that red should be used until you get a decent three set line. And then after you want to go further for than that, I would use blacks. What you determine as three decent lines is up to you, but you're not going to be worrying about cubing in large sessions until much later. While I'm here, I might as well go over the Star Force Enhancing. Star Force Enhancing is a way- well, I'm not done with cubing. That was bad. Sorry. Excuse me. Cubing as, men cubing, as mentioned before, rerolls the three lines of potential. Two to three. You can expand the lines of potential using stamps. Uh, if you get an item with only two lines of potential, you can make it three, but you cannot go above three. When cubing, you have you re-roll those three lines, of course, and if you're using a black cube, you have a chance to you can choose between the before or after outcome. When using red cubes, you are red cubes are mainly just being able to re-roll legendary items and having a higher chance to tear up, but they do not have any special effect. There's also master craftsman cubes, which have which are able to roll items up to unique. Uh, and there's Meister Cubes, which can re-roll Unique into Legendary, but they cannot re-roll Legendary themselves. So as you can see, there's a tier list. Oh, there's also a Cult Cubes, which can only uh, re-roll Epic and can only return Epic. So from that said, there is five uh, tiers of cubes. I believe that's right. Black, Red, Meister, Master, and Occult. There's other cubes, but they're not available in Reboot, to my knowledge. Either way, they are used extensively and are very, very powerful items as your potential lines is your main source of damage, believe it or not. Reboot is very limited in the amounts of, in the ways you can gain damage as in direct upgrades. We do not have bonus potential or scrolling like a normal server, and you've probably figured that out by now. We do, however, have Star Force Enhancing, which I will get into in the next part, as in shortly or maybe in the next episode but the gist of it and the when it all comes down to it potential potentialing is very important to making it to the end game content just know that there are certain lines that can only be rolled on certain pieces of equipment there are ways to tear up preferences of course there's data but it's 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 flaky, I guess, is the best word, or it's, I take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it really comes down to what you believe in at the end, because you can get almost twice as many rolls with reds or supposedly a higher chance of re-rolling with blacks. Uh, can't say much more than that, but the goal is always to get a good piece of item, a good item to legendary tier for further stat, for further enhancing later when you decide to cube. Cubing is going to be the main way to gain a lot of damage towards the end game. Keep track of that. Store it in the back of your head. We're probably not going to be cubing for quite some time until we get hit the Kana. Either way, I'll get right into Star Force Enhancing. So I'm such a goody two-shoes. Uh, I mentioned Star Force Enhancing in the middle of the cubing and potential explanation, which was done very poorly. So I really recommend you check the document in the description as I'll be much more fluid with my wording. Either way, Star Force Enhancing is our other very important uh, way of gaining damage. Uh, we, items are able to be starred for the most part. You are able to star any item that is level 20 or above and when you get to 40, you can transpose items with from the same type of equipment slot, like a weapon to another weapon, but the weapon has to be lower leveled than the weapon, and I think it has to be within 10 levels range. Meaning, if I were to have a level 50 weapon, I can't transpose it to, with, with at least one star, uh, you can't transpose it to a level 40 weapon. You can, however, transpose it to a level 60. I'm unsure if you can go further than that, but I believe the the minimum, the maximum, or the minimum level difference has to be ten, and that will, or the most common level difference that is valid is ten levels. 
Either way, star forcing in itself, when you hover over an item, they have a number of grayed out stars unless they came starred, which is not possible. You would have had to star them yourself. Those stars are the show the limit. Currently in GMS, we are limited to 15 stars. Uh, don't know much else about 25 flames or anything, but that is not in reboot currently, nor in GMS. Either way, adding stars tends to add all stat, and if it's a weapon, we uh, extra attack. It also adds health and defense, depending on what you're doing. But again, its, it's main allure is extra stat and extra attack. It's worth enhancing your items, as there are certain maps that are restricted to those who only have enough star force to uh, even do damage to those enemies and take less damage from them. I'd really recommend that you star force, especially as a new player, once you hit 140, at least all your gear to 5 stars. I, You're not going to be one-shotting mobs anytime soon, especially if you're training around your level range. At least I'm not, and I, I must be doing something wrong if there is a way to get around that. The first character is definitely going to be the hardest as you start to get slowly get to the end of fourth job and into fifth job. We are making progress, but there is a lot to cover and a lot more to write, so I again highly recommend you check the document as I'm mainly glossing over these topics and giving a quick overview of them for said document. Other than that, I will see you later friends, bye.